Good afternoon and welcome to our last installment of our Advanced Insight webinar series for the year. Today we'll be covering our NSP80 and N8000 intercom systems. We'll cover each of these products, but we'll keep the focus on how each pertain to use in a corporate environment. As mentioned in the name, these mixer amplifiers have digital capabilities, offering convenience and flexibility. We'll review product functionality, features, benefits, and common applications. We'll also help you identify when each product serves as the best solution, negate any preconceived limitations, and truly understand what makes each product shine. So my name is Shauna. I am a junior marketing manager here. And we also have Jim, who is our guest panelist. And Jim, you can give yourself an introduction as well. Okay, thank you, Shauna. Uh, Jim McGinnis here at TOA Electronics, I'm one of the system designers and product support guys that uh, many of you may have already spoken with. Uh, we have a number of people here. I'm just I'm just one of the little guys, so I'm going to help out today with uh, with Shauna and her uh, systems uh, that she wants to present on NSP80 and also on N8000 equipment. All right, and today, Jim, we will be discussing our key features and product functionality of both of the series and what makes each differ. We'll also talk about the versatility of each product lineup and also the ease of setup compatibility with third-party systems, and then what makes each an ideal solution within the corporate campus designs. Um, and then we'll take a sneak peek at some of the operation software that each series uses. Cool. Um, our biggest thing here is we want you to leave with a couple of key takeaways from today's webinar with how to articulate facts about our line of SIP and IP intercom systems and how and when to use these in the field. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to submit in the Q&A chat box. Otherwise, we'll respond at the end of the webinar. Uh, and as some of you may be familiar with these systems, our SIP and IP intercom systems, more specifically our NSV80 and N8000 series products. Um, I do want to start off with something that will be a bit of a little question, Jim. Um, are you able to give us a bit of a background on our SIP versus our IP intercom systems? And then as well as the key features, benefits, functionality, and how each differ. Well, sure, well, let's get started on that. Let me do a little uh, sharing of screens and we'll go here and here. So with that, um, We'll, we'll start with the NSP uh, 80 system. So here's a picture of our master station. Uh, I believe we also have this in one of our uh, literature pieces. And this shows a little bit about what you can do uh, just at a glance with the master station. The master station is uh, basically like a small uh, iPad type of device, you know, or our current tablet so that you can you know, access the internet, et cetera. So it acts you know, dual purpose, but of course its primary function is being a, a phone system. It has built-in camera uh, and other features that can uh, enhance you know, operation uh, in any particular application, whether it be corporate business, education, you know, on campuses, et cetera. I mean, here you can have you know, video of you know, person to person, or even from our uh, various uh, stations that you can put out there. But as you can see, seven inch touch screen uh, uh, display, uh, three megapixel camera. Uh, we have a, a, an acoustic echo canceller. So that's important so that, you know, you don't get that ringing and, and uh, redundancy, uh, latency sounds in the background. And we also do call forwarding from multiple stations. At the bottom here, you can see uh, we list our three main pieces. We have the, the master as the first one, the video door station. So you have a, a call button to, that'll call a specific master, but it also has a camera. So 
if you are you know calling into a master let's say it's a security position or something like that somebody's at the door they can instantly see who's there on the master station conversely if a master calls the door station the camera is called up and you can see who's uh, at that location in addition we also have just an audio door station so that would be for just general calling don't need video in certain applications, maybe internal locations to your building in a basic hallway application or something like that. You may not need it, but um, we do have uh, just the audio version. These two door stations, we have a back box for them for uh, their mounting uh, conditions. And it also comes with an optional, don't have to use it. It's, it's part of the back box but it has a heater built in. So that way, if you're in low temperature applications up in the north or that type of thing, you can uh, supply power to the heater. It'll keep the uh, stations uh, you know, comfortably warm, we might say. So that way they'll operate without any issue. And that, cause that can be an issue when you get down to very low temperatures, you know, you go up into the upper US, let's say Minnesota or someplace uh, this time of year, you know, in December, it can get very cold into the minus digits, very well into the minus digits, and that can affect any electronic system at that point. So uh, we want to prevent that, and so we do offer that as uh, an option. And then if we go through some of the other uh, pieces here, our door stations are weaterproof. Uh, again, uh, three megapixel camera infrared capabilities, so that way, it, low, low light level, you can see without a problem. Our equipment is OnViv compatible. So therefore systems with OnViv, we can connect with them for the level that uh, OnViv needs to connect to us with, because of course OnViv is a much larger format for uh, video. And so this is a, uh, for the parts that we uh, are a part of, we are supported that way. Uh, we already did the built-in AEC and the anti-vandal function is basically the durability of the door station, you know, heavy build, um, a rounded push button, um, so that there's no edges, can't be hit very easily, things of that nature make it a much better uh, application piece. So then if we also look at one other option I wanna bring into our SIP line is we have a module called the SP11N. This is a SIP uh, uh, device that can be placed into many of our existing audio systems that accept 900 series modules. Some of our competitors also have uh, 900 series bays, which this typically can also be uh, compatible with. Of course, you need to check the spec for those particular items. But for anything TOA, uh, anything with a 900 series module slot, this can go in there. Its primary function is to answer, okay, when it's called, and then you instantly have paging going out. And of course, depending on features and functions that are set up in the mixers that uh, apply will determine how it operates. In addition, we have here, as you can see with the uh, control port or control output, we have five contact closures. So that way we can do up to five zones of paging, individual paging. So when this particular module is called, then you can enter in a number, let's say one through five in this application, and you can page zone one or page zone four, whichever one that you need to do, and, or also you know, make an all call as well. In addition, this particular uh, module can also be used with uh, an outbox uh, that we've uh, prepared for this model. So now it can interface with a lot of standard mixer amplifiers that do not have um, a module slot. So we've tried to make it you know, uh, versatile in that way uh, so that it can be used even outside of our 900 series offerings. Um, I can go back here to, let me see, um, some of our other pictures that we have here. So this is the master that we were showing before. Um, and this is the, uh, 
the door station without uh, the video. Um, I had another breakout of that, but let me see if I can go there real quick and get uh, another copy of that particular station. Here we are. Sorry about that. And here is the, the video door station, as you can see, very similar to the other one, almost identical, right? Has a call light and all of that. But here is your, your camera with your infrared sensors and light detector all built in. So very, very neatly done. And then here is a bigger picture of the SP11N. So that's uh, a little bit about what we're doing on SIP. And then we also have um, in our uh, repertoire of uh, products, we can go over to our N8000 uh, systems and let me get a picture of that. Okay, and that would be in this group here. Okay, so for instance, we have our N8000. This is what we call our master station or our main master station for N8000. This is for uh, IP intercom, different than uh, SIP. Okay, they, they talk differently. So um, it's like two different languages. And so we, we have uh, an interface for that as well. We have the N8000 SGQ, which will then act as your bridge between SIP and N8000. Um, you know, of course, SIP, we're compatible with most any SIP system out there with uh, standard codecs that are used today. Um, the N8000 SG is the gateway between packet intercom uh, systems that we are using and um, SIP uh, initiation protocol. So we sell that as, a, as an optional item so that you can expand out. Now our N8000, one advantage is, is when you buy the N8000, um, there are no licenses available uh, for it. Once you buy it, it is yours to keep. Um, and you know you can program or change the programming. Of course, in the SIP world, each SIP is an extension on a SIP um, uh, network, and usually there's a license per SIP device. So you have to balance out, you know, cost of your network, um, cost of your licensing, and that licensing is usually over a period of time, could be a year or maybe two years, that type of thing. Whereas uh, Intercom doesn't have that. So we, uh, we also offer intercom so that you have choices. And if you want to marry the two, we can do that with the, the gateway. So that's some of the, the uh, advantages of some of our systems here. And we can, let me see, I can bring this, I cannot bring that down, okay. So uh, let me come back over to here. No, that's not going to work today. All right, so let me see. Here is the other picture that we have for uh, N8000. So IP protocol, the, our, I, our, one of the advantages of N8000 is we can make an all IP solution, but we also do um, kind of, it's kind of like a hybrid. So we have key, key pieces within the system. And from those key pieces, we have, STP wiring or standard twisted pair that go to individual stations. In the end, they work and feel the same, uh, but a lot lower cost than if you're going all IP to every location in a building. So if you have a mass system that you need to put in, the NA1000 uh, is slated to do up to 3,072 locations, which is uh, a pretty enormous system. I've seen a number of systems, maybe not quite that big, but hundreds and hundreds of extensions, and it works quite well. Here you can see uh, IP protocol, paging intercom. You can make um, dozens of particular paging groups if you want. You can do system monitoring. Um, we call that a scan monitor. You can have a remote access depending on what you're doing. And so in this particular case, um, we have many different pieces that we can go over, but that's uh, for maybe a different time. But you can see all the different uh, 
uh, options that we've listed here with auto answer functions that's typically used for uh, door stations, etc. We have uh, contact outputs depending on which box and, and what benefits that you need from our system. We can do time synchronization. We can do it from a local clock. We can do it from NTP, so your system's always on point. And you know, land connections, we can be also WAN capable as well. We have a number of systems in the US where they're located in many different uh, areas, but they all act as one. So that's a little bit about what we're doing uh, with our equipment. Jim, thank you for that explanation. Again, it was quite a loaded question and you gave quite a detailed answer. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and because you did touch on different points, um, if there is also a way that you can maybe elaborate on the versatility of each, um, you know, compare to one another, mm -hmm. that would be great. Sure. So, you know, uh, the SIP system uh, and the intercom system, they can act kind of similar. I mean, they're both intercom systems. The N8000 is its own protocol. So therefore, um, you know, it's, it speaks the TOA language, shall we say, whereas the SIP system is a, a known standard system session uh, uh, protocol, and uh, therefore it's compatible with uh, other uh, systems that are out there. I think I had mentioned that earlier, but we'll mention it again. So it's, it's available, you know, to work with other systems. So if you want to expand on an existing system with added benefit features that we have, you know, it should not be a problem. We do uh, point to point or we do uh, by a server. So either way, so you can call, um, you know, point to point. If you know the IP address of the device, you can enter that in and call a device directly. Um, if you do it by server, of course, it has to be registered on the server, and then you would call it by whatever the extension would be for that system. But we're compatible either way, whether it whether it's point to point or whether it's uh, through a server. So that's you know uh, a standard you know, protocol for for SIP. Now, for, for N8000, you would program the N8000. Um, it, it, it's not a, a session initiation protocol. It's its own packet intercom system. And so, therefore, you're going to program it up ahead. You're going to give it, uh, you know, you could give a name to a station. You could give it an extension, et cetera. And, there, and then once it's uh, programmed and loaded, then it acts like uh, any other, uh, you know, shall we say intercom system, whether it be SIP or otherwise. But the two don't talk to each other unless you have the gateway in between. Okay, thank you once again for sharing that insight. Um, so coming around to our last question here, mm -hmm. um, just starting off with, you know, a statement that a lot of customers, they do look for a product that can check, that can check off all the bells and whistles that they're looking for, while still being able to, you know, have something that's simple to use. Can you give a brief explanation on each product setup, a glimpse at the software behind the scenes used to do this, and then how this translates into the ease of use for the end user? And then to follow up, why are systems like these appealing in corporate designs? Sure. So I think, you know, kind of working backwards, once, once the, the systems are programmed, whether it be SIP side or N8000 uh, side, they work very smoothly for the end user, okay? So it becomes more of a, a situation of setup. And for SIP, it's, it's basically you're going to set up the requirements within its web browser. And we, we do have a tool that you can access you know, multiple SIP devices at once so that you can set IP addresses, et cetera, or you can do it one by one, depending on what you want to do. Uh, but we do have those features available. Um, and then it, it really comes down to the I, IT department to give you the parameters of the SIP system. Okay. And once you have that and log that into the browser of the SIP uh, devices, then they should register, which of course is a function of the, the uh, server that the IT department is running. They can confirm that it's registered. You can confirm within our software that it's registered. 
and then they will uh, operate uh, accordingly. In the case of NA1000, it's more of the IT department to chisel out a, a series of IP addresses that you're going to use uh, if it's gonna remain on their network. Or one of the benefits of our NA1000 is that it can run uh, on its own little subnetwork. It doesn't have to be connected to a network. We just need a switch that the devices can talk to each other. Um, you know, flat switch is typically what we say. It doesn't have to be managed. And so therefore we need a series of IP addresses that we can use uh, to you know, set the system up. And again, the setting software in the N8000 will allow you to do that. It will ID all of the devices at once, makes your life a lot easier. So I'll show you a little bit about that in just a second. And uh, let's see if I can uh, come back to sharing a screen one more time. All right, let's see. All right, let's see what we have here. So for, let's see, we have this guy and here. So if we come into our master station for the SIP, so that's the NSP80, this is what you would see when you'd log in. So you have all your standard parameters that you would typically want to see. Uh, you know, addresses, subnet mask, you know, gateways, DSN, all of that is in here. Um, and this, by the way, is the same for the other NSP80 devices, whether it be the VS1 video door station or the AS1, the audio door station. This is what you would see. And so in here, we can take a look at, you know, your account, enable, display labels, all of that stuff, usernames and passwords. Standard things that you would typically set up your server IP address, your ports typically 50, 60, um, or obviously it can be changed, but that's uh, pretty typical. So, all of this is in here, um, easy enough to set up, and then you submit it. Once you submit it, then the machine will update. You can have a network basic uh, status, uh, quick look type of thing. All right, in the phone, many different things you can set up time, preferences, voice, depending on what you need, that type of thing, automatic game controls, that type of thing, your video, what, what your different levels should be set to, um, and then various uh, keys that you can set as well. Tones, there's different defaults, all right? And then a dialing plan, depending on what you need. All right, phone book. Local phone book can be in here. You can have a call log. I don't know how much is in it. We do have a little bit on this one. So you can see what's going on uh, and what was going on. Uh, we have an upgrade in case we need to do firmware changes, et cetera. And of course, uh, security, um, different things, and passwords, et cetera. So that's pretty you know, straightforward for that. And then for our um, SIP uh, module, uh, let me see if I have, no, I don't have a SIP module available today, but there is another product I wanted to touch on uh, for a second, uh, which is related to our, our SIP equipment for, um, for corporate environment, for campuses. This could be big for cor corporate campuses, especially for security, having um, multiple locations. We, we have a variety of different pieces. Our um, IPA1 SC15 is a great horn. It's two level power, depending on whether it's PoE or PoE plus. And then we also have ceiling speakers, either the standard um, small type speaker, which is the IPPC238, or an excerpt of our uh, standard audio, which is the IPA1 PC580. We offer it in round and square. I apologize for the, uh, the uh, labeling is backwards, but we do it in a square box and, and a circle, just like, uh, just like the original um, 580. And then we have two other things. We have an IPA1AF, that's the audio interface. This is a big deal because now you can pull audio out and feed that to any standard amplifier. So if you wanted to have an endpoint at some area in your building and you need to feed to an existing audio system, which could be a, a, a very typical, especially in retros or even in new 
builds. Uh, here's an easy way to do that. This gets uh, registered like any other device and you call it and now you can page into whatever you want. And in, in addition to that, we've come out with our latest piece, which is the IPA1PG, Paging Gateway. So with the Paging Gateway, you can now set up paging groups of any size that you want using IP network type systems, right? So uh, you can set all of that up within the paging gateway. So it's really, really a, a great benefit uh, since this little guy came out. In addition, uh, I mentioned on PoE, PoE Plus, uh, here are our basic stuff, I can't talk here. SIP systems is what I'm trying to say. On Viv, of course, multicast. You can do pre recorded messages in our speakers so that way you can trigger them if you're using uh, enabled software to do so. That way, uh, you know, from a security point of view, you can fire out standard messages, you know, you know, attention, you shouldn't be in this area, that kind of thing. Um, and so you have an 80 megabyte. Um, memory uh, slot, and that can be uh, all, a couple of different uh, formats. It can be WAV format, but it also could be MP3. So when you go MP3, now that you have compression, you can add a lot of time in on messages for that. And then you have triggered control uh, contact closures, et cetera, along with uh, VMS video management systems as benefits all to the system. So that's just something extra that I wanted to add in. Uh, that we didn't mention before. Um, if we go into the N8000 series, so uh, the access to this, you can any of the IP devices can be accessed with a web browser. It's mostly for uh, maintenance application. So if you're doing, uh, let's say, a firmware upgrade, or you're doing, uh, let's say, a backup reload to a machine like that, or you need to set a couple of special settings, you would do that via web browser. But the real uh, difference would be is we, we use this setting software, which is what you would see. So in here, I have listed, and this is a system that we have here. We have uh, a CO, meaning central office, uh, basically a POTS line interface. We have an AL that converts a standard phone to a packet intercom. Why do you want that? Well. Maybe you want, maybe in an area where you have equipment that might get damaged or knocked off the wall, it's a lot easier to replace a $10 princess phone than it is for a regular master station. So this is one way to look at that. Now we have the AF. The AF is a dual function design that can be audio or time-based, time meaning it be your bell scheduler. Okay, we have an MI, which is a general interface uh, that does a number of different things, including contact closures up to 16 uh, in or out. We have a DI, which does 32 contacts in or out. Then we get into the actual um, main units, uh, 8000 EX, which is our two wire system, and that can have uh, up to eight speech paths, depending on how the system is set up. We have the 8010 up to two speech paths. 8400, this system uh, we use for areas where we need high pickup and, uh, for uh, microphones, et cetera, and so forth. Um, and 8000 RS is a very key option for many buildings and or um, education applications. These are the typical ones where you'd have speaker in the ceiling, call buttons on the wall, or a combination uh, of a number of different options. This allows for several speech links. This is the less expensive 8010, which allows for one speech link, depending on the size of your system and the number of uh, conversations you wanna have at one time. N8500 is an older, it's a legacy uh, IP master station, but completely compatible to the current system. 8610 is our, um, paging microphone style master station. And it can have a number of additional keypads added to it, giving you many buttons. And then here we have a couple, like one that's in my office, 8600, which we've already shown and several others. And then we have the door station, uh, which is an IP door station with, this is an external one being all uh, metal and uh, weatherproof. And this is an internal version, has a uh, heavy plastic uh, outer case, but, uh, uh, 
you know, where, where steel isn't needed, that's what you would use. We have some other interfaces called SX200 uh, IP. That's for our SX2000 interface. And then as we spoke before, the N8000SG, which will cause this system to be compatible and interface to a SIP system. So when you look at this, this uh, availability of how many different stations you can have on this system, now you can marry it to an SG SIP system and have all the stations that are there. Oh, wait, there's more. And then you add it to the SX2000, and that's a very highly scalable system as well for doing audio uh, in large uh, building applications. And so this will allow you to page into that as well. So having an NA1000 is kind of a, uh, you know, a multi-purpose system. A quick look at the station table, you can see many different version devices. If I open up this here, you can see all the different models that we have for the EX type of system. Okay, if we scroll down a little bit and we take a look at the 8400, um, we have a number of different uh, door stations and one master for that one. Here's your N8000 with all the different versions. 140s and and uh, which are very popular and 144s and then the steel box versions which are these guys down here all right and then the 8010 rs looks the same and here's all your master stations that are down here and the sip gateway and this is your sip gateway setup here etc so depending on what you need this can be quite versatile remember n8000 no license is necessary SIP systems, all dependent on your SIP server and what the requirements are for licensing on that device. Um, so from a campus standpoint, we cover the gambit uh, for you know, getting uh, coverage in any location, really. And you marry that to many of our other systems, and there's pretty much nothing that we can't do in, in most standard systems. And for SIP, we do the same things uh, and you know, integration into N8000. So there's a lot going on on either side. Jim, thank you for that very detailed explanation of both systems. Thank you for those visuals. Um, definitely helps to see each system in their own you know, uh, environment. Um, so again, you know, just to go over and review everything that was talked about, we did go ahead and have some of the key features, product functionalities of both of those series, and then just how they each deferred. Um, and then just go ahead and also showcasing the versatility of each of those product lines. And lastly, as Jim just went through, you know, just kind of what the setup process looks like, how that works any third-party systems that it can work with and why in this particular case, it is an ideal solution for corporate campus designs. Um, so it looks like we are now bringing this to a close. Um, and if you guys are looking for, um, you know, a place to catch up on different webinars that you might've missed, you are able to see that on our TOA YouTube page and that will be specifically under our webinar series category. Um, you're also able to check out any of our product video reviews. Um, so again, that would be under its own category as well. But I do want to thank everyone for coming today and hopefully we shall see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye. Take care.